the call for peace and national cohesion is getting higher as June 24th multi-tier election draws closer. It is no secret that during elections, tensions normally rise as a result of campaign messages that politicians might use. Former British High Commissioner to Sierra Leone during the war, uh, Komrabai Peter Penfold, recently wrote a piece where he urged Sierra Leoneans to maintain peace and national cohesion. Now, you could uh, recall that um, Peter was very instrumental in ensuring that Sierra Leone has peace in the 90s. Well, this morning, to talk on peace and national cohesion ahead of the elections, we have Komrabai Peter Penfold, uh, former British High Commissioner to Sierra Leone, and Ambassador Suli Darami, Chief Executive Officer, Ahmad Tijan Kaba Foundation for Peace and Democracy. Gentlemen, good morning and thanks for joining us in the studio. Good morning. It's good, good to be back in the AYV studios. And thank you for reuniting me with my good friend, Ambassador Duarmi. <laughs> <laughs> good morning. Thank you. Uh, Ambassador, I'll, I'll start off with you. Um, um, the purpose of um, Peter's, um, um, I wouldn't say visit to Sierra Leone because Komrabai is now a Sierra Leonean. Mm -hmm. uh, the purpose of his visit to Sierra Leone and how it ties to the Ahmad Tijan Kaba Foundation for Peace and Democracy. Yeah, well, good morning and thank you again for reuniting me with him. If you recall, during the reign of uh, late President Ahmad Tijan Kaba, Kumrabai was not only, only present in Sierra Leone, he played an extremely significant and pivotal role in assisting Tijan Kaba to achieve the peace we all enjoy today. So anytime he visits Sierra Leone, we are happy to receive him and we are glad to see him. And we are very particularly happy if he comes at a time when we need people to be reminded of the essence of peace, the need for national cohesion in the country. This is why this particular visit is most welcome. And so during the course of the visit, what are the activities as you go about preaching peace and national cohesion? One thing we do as Tijan Kaba Foundation, we let everybody preach peace from your own perspective, from what you believe it is, for as long as it leads to national cohesion. With, with Kumrabai's visit, nobody dictates to him what he should do, where he should go, and what he should say. We know and we are convinced and we believe that whatever he's going to do and say in Sierra Leone, we're going to peace is to encourage all of us to, to, to adhere to former preachings of Tijan Kaba. So, so when he's in town, we, we, we wish that he could have the time and opportunity to visit as many places as he could and talk to as many people as he is. As an outsider, also an insider, because he's lived in Sierra Leone, but from a neutral perspective, he does, I'm sure he doesn't belong to any political <laughs> party as it is. And that neutrality, is so it's not always just about the message, it's also about the messenger. Um, the Ahmad Tijan Kaba Foundation, we all know that President Kaba, late um, President Kaba was ruling under the SLPP. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to establish trust amongst other political parties, uh, guaranteeing that the foundation is not just, you know, another uh, a representative or um, sort of an ally of the of SLPP. The, ah, okay. We, we, we're taking exactly after Tijan Kaba. Tijan Kaba's administration was all inclusive. He respected everybody across board. His governance system, he, he people with disability we are recognized in his government. Women were recognized across all 16 or 15 tribes in the country. At the foundation, for example, we have uh, people who not only worked with Tijan Kaba, but a lot of people who believed in what Tijan Kaba preached. And most of these people do not belong to political party activ activities. Everybody in the foundation does not participate in active political party activities in the country. For example, he, he, his wife, the late, the, the late Kaba's wife, the widow of the president, she was a, a member of the foundation administration. But for the past two years, everybody who had interest or who active, actively participated in politics 
were asked to resign and leave the running of the foundation. So the foundation has maintained neutrality since then. Okay, let's go over to Komra Bai. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here again this morning. You know, I read in one of the interviews you had, it stated that Penfold, a career diplomat, had a course in his short stay in Sierra Leone and developed a strong liking for Sierra Leone. So that liking you have for Sierra Leone and together, you know, with the justice system and how far we have gone as a nation in terms of peace and tolerance, have we gone a long way? I think we've certainly gone a long way, and I'd like to feel, I'd say, we're stronger than liking for Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is inside my heart. I feel as much at home in Sierra Leone as I do back, back in Britain. I come out two or three times a year. Um, I get around the country a great deal. I always make sure I travel outside of Freetown because I feel that if you really want to understand the country, you can't just sit in Freetown all the time. Um, and it's because I think we, I was here and shared with people like my good friend Ambassador Dharami and, and others the very difficult times we went through, and they were very difficult times. Um, I feel I share the commitment that we have to make sure that we don't go back to those bad times. It's, it's, it's sad to say that I meet with many young people in this country who don't have any idea of what, how bad those situation was at that time. Um, where we were all living in fear of our lives. Yeah. Um, and as I said, in a curious way, the rebel war brought the country together. It was very democratic from that point of view. I mean, everybody suffered with the loss of a loved one, a limb, a home, or a job. But we demonstrated then, particularly under the leadership of President Kaba, that by uniting and coming together, we could overcome these things. Um, and it showed that nothing, by uniting together and coming together, nothing is beyond the capacity of Sierra Leone people. You know, late President Kaba was known for his steps to look back at what happened and to correct most of the wrongdoings. And one of the significance of all of those is the TRC report. Are you satisfied with, you know, some of the recommendations that were made? Have we gone a long way, <coughs> excuse me, in that direction as well? Um, I was always a great supporter of the TRC. I think it did a very good and valuable job. Um, I had less of a good impression about the special court at the time, but the TRC took a lot of time. It went around and met a lot of people. Um, the only thing I felt at that time, and continue to feel to a certain extent, that perhaps we focused too much attention on the combatants taking part in the world war and not enough on the victims. Um, the victims really did not get a great deal of assistance, particularly from what the international community was doing. Um, and it was very important to me to show that we'd overcome the rebel war, that there was a peace dividend for the victims as well as much as, as for the combatants. Um, but other than that, the TRC, I think, has helped um, to bring us together. And we've now, you know, since that time, since President Kaba came back and formed the government, as Ambassador Army said, bringing in people of all different persuasions and so on. Um, I mean, you, you know, it's very ironic that this is the country in which I maintain it sets the example to the world on how, how Muslims and Christians can live together in harmony. It sets an example on how racism has hardly any sort of part to play, even though we have a history of slavery. So how ironic it should be that po party political differences have the ability to undo that good harmony. And that's why I think it is so important that we do everything we can to ensure that the elections, particularly these next elections, are violent free. Uh, an over 20-year-old um, uh, um, article republished on The Guardian says, um, former British High Commissioner Peter Penfold in Freetown asks whether Sierra Leone's Truth and Reconciliation Tribunals could endanger peace in a deeply damaged nation. Fast forward to where we are today. What would be the answer to that question that you asked over 20 years ago? Uh, well, first of all, I'd have to rack my brains for 20 <laughs> years ago when you get as old as me. Um, and I can't quite recall the quote, but, but I do recall, I thought I was saying it more in, in the direction of the special court rather than the TRC. I was very concerned about when the indictments were being issued by the special court that they had the ability to undermine the peace that we were achieving at that time. Um, 
As regards the TRC, it had to be handled very carefully. We were going into grounds which were very hurtful for, for the people of that time. Um, we were asking the actual combatants themselves to go and face the actual people that they had caused suffering for um, and ask for their forgiveness. This was asking a great deal of people. I come back to the point, we did, and they achieved it. I mean, this is, many people outside would have said, oh, no, this is far too dangerous to do this. You can't expect the person who chopped somebody's arm off to go and say to them, oh, I'm sorry now, and think that they will be forgiven. But in the, this is the way that Sierra Leoneans have demonstrated their ability and resilience to overcome all these sort of problems. You, you were in, 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 in Sierra Leone, obviously, during that time and um, followed through on, on it. You must have been familiar with the document, the um, Truth and Reco um, the TRC report. So far, what areas are you surprised at as far as the recommendations go in the areas where we chose to follow the, the, the recommendations as a country and some of those recommendations that till date we have not followed through on? Um, again, I'd have to rack my brains on the, all, the, all the actual details of the TRC. Um, but as I said earlier, I think one of my main concerns was to ensure that as well as preaching reconciliation and peace between all the combatants, between all those who suffered, um, to try to ensure that the victims would get a peace dividend. Um, I remember being struck by one example at the time of a, a carpenter in one of the small villages, um, and the rebels had come to that village and they'd destroyed his carpentry shop, they chopped off his hands, um, and then Months later, the rebel who had actually caused that came to the village to apologise, carrying with him a set of carpentry tools mm. which he had been given as part of the reconciliation process. And that to me seemed to be an example of how, you know, we were not focusing enough on the victims as opposed to the combatants. It was a difficult choice to make. It was a difficult choice for the international community. It was a difficult choice for President Kaba and his government. Um, I remember talking to President Cabo at the time, I would go and see him and say, so your Excellency, what are your priorities? And he would say, hi Commissioner, everything is a priority at the moment. And that was the state of the country that we were in. But coming back to your earlier point, look how far we have come. Look how far we've come since those days there. And that's why, let's not slide back, because the worst thing that could happen now is that we undermine all those sacrifices that were made by people to achieve the peace, undermine all the good work that we've done to achieve democracy. Be people outside look at Sierra Leone with awe and re great respect for what the country has done. So let's not start getting divided again in a violent way. P party politics is very healthy. I mean, it's very good to have a responsible government. They are supposed to, when they get voted in, act on behalf of all the people in the country, not just those who voted mm. for them. Equally, the opposition party should be vibrant and hold that government to account for things that they think they're not doing right. Not just represent or have a different view. Um, that's how we have a healthy democracy. We have an unhealthy democracy when it turns to violence and, and... You're obviously no stranger to Sierra Leone, you're frequent here, but this time around, what's the, the mission of your, your, your um, visit? Um, as usual, I have two charities very close to my heart. I set up a charity for initially the blind school here in Freetown, which now covers all the blind schools of Sierra Leone. <coughs> and then also, I'm patron of a charity called the Dorothy Springer Trust, okay. which is teaching employment skills for the disabled. And I always maintain the best way to help the disabled, who of course feature very prominently in this country, is don't, not just give them charity, help them get a job, let them have their own respect and integrity and have, bring up their own family. Um, I've also had a really interesting trip this time. Um, I met um, a very, um, Edu important educator from the United States, a Sierra Leonean. He's called Francis Mukasa. He comes from a little village called Mandina in Moyamba district. 
And he has come back to give his contribution to the country by setting up a school in Mandina. Um, and uh, I had the privilege of going down and seeing that school while I was there, and I was very impressed with it. Um, while I was there, Mandina is not far away from Gabangatok, which I've always wanted to visit because it's the birthplace of Milton Magai. I never had the opportunity to do it as I was High Commissioner because of the troubles. I never had an opportunity since then. I have to be honest with you, I was very disappointed with that visit because if you go there, you would never ever know that this was the birthplace of the founding father of Sierra Leone. As you enter the town, there's no sign saying, welcome to the birthplace of the founding father of Sierra Leone, Sir Milton Magai. I've tried to find his house, his house has fallen down. Um, and I, I thought, this is a shame. I mean, this, is a, this was a great man, a great part of our history. Um, and we should have more, show more respect for the people who have made much major contributions. I mean, what Ambassador Durami and his colleagues are doing for President Kaba is absolutely right. We have to respect his memory and his legacy. Um, but think of the other people who have made a major contribution. Um, and, and particularly, say, visitors who come here. Um, it's also the birthplace, of course, of the second Prime Minister, Albert Nagai. I know we have statues here in Freetown, but in his actual birthplace, um, I had expected more, quite frankly. And I think if you can't show respect for these sort of people, how are you going to show respect for your country as a whole? And this is a very important message to get across to our young people. Our young people need positive role models. Um, and who better than to follow the examples of President mm -hmm. Tijan Kaba, Prime Minister Milton Magai? Okay, Ambassador, let me go over to you. You have been doing a lot of work, and you know one thing that caught my attention is the dialogue across divisions you get to carry out. Since now we are at a very trivial moment, we are approaching the elections. Tell us about the dialogue across divisions. Yes, gladly so. Um, I just would want to say a few words on the TRC. We at the Foundation are particularly concerned about what is not contained in the TRC report and that is cascading what the report itself is saying to people who were never around when the war was there. This is 30 years ago, a little over 30 years ago. So it means all the youth, all these people who are involved in active political violence, active political destruction, mayhem and confusion, have very little or no knowledge about the, the, the war what went wrong, how it went about. So if we, 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 we at the foundation are at the verge of sourcing assistance and funding to be able to cascade that particular document down to people in that age group, particularly through schools who want to go to elementary schools, who want to go to tertiary education. We believe if we do that, then the knowledge of the war will become universal, if you like, global in Sierra Leone, and then we would say everybody knows about it. And then we will be able to follow Tijan Kaba's adage when he says, no more, forever, not again, will we will resolve to conflict, to resolve our disagreements. So there's this lack of knowledge lack on of what knowledge. happened. People do not know. If, if you look at August 10, if you sit and watch your videos, I, 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 I was... I found it difficult to find anybody above 45 in that group, those who were in the street, let alone, let alone 50. Everybody on the, on the videos I've seen, we are below 40, we are below 30. Who tells me? They do not even know what it is to have caused that kind of damage and mayhem. So we are looking for that and we are seeking assistance to be able to cascade that to everybody. Now, coming back to your, to your, to your question, we, we received funding for then OSIWA. It's now um, Open Society for Africa to do the dialogue across nations. Mm -hmm. We've done the first phase. We went around all over the country talking to people. What actually was entailed in that program was to have people who share common interests, irrespective of their tribal differences, mm -hmm. irrespective of their political party differences, but have commonality in their localities. Say, for example, everybody in AYV, irrespective of where you come from, will talk in the interest of something that's beneficial 
for AYB. If we have Sierra Leoneans in Kono, Sierra Leoneans in Moemba, Sierra Leoneans in Falaban, Sierra Leoneans in Waterloo, talking about things that will benefit their localities as entirety as a whole community, eventually we will end up having peace and self-interest across the country. Yeah, you know, observing elections also fall under your mandate. And from your website, I learned again that you went to Gambia at some point in time. And how do you plan to, you know, put some of those recommendations or the things you saw that were good to replicate them here in Sierra Leone? One aspect of our vision is to have national cohesion in this country. Observing elections is very simple. You go collect information and you assess your information to be able to say whether the elections were credible, fair, and free for everybody. And for all elections in the world to be, to be free, fair, and credible, they do just have three qualities. It has to be all-inclusive, it has to be accountable, and transparent. And if we observe elections, those are the three qualities we look for. And when we look for those things, we want to be in position to assist election management bodies in the country as how to go about hosting elections where we don't end up fighting. It's a contest agreed, but at the end of the day, we all remain Sierra Leoneans. We want it to be peaceful. We want it to be all-inclusive. We want it to be transparent and acceptable to the population. It, we believe if we achieve that, the question of national cohesion becomes easy exercise for us to do. Some growth has happened at the Amity Jan Kaba Foundation, apart mm -hmm. from tolerance, preaching peace and the likes. There's also another angle. I see the observ election observers network. Tell us about that. Oh, yes. The Jan Kaba Foundation is, is part of a coalition of a little over 118 civil society organizations in this country. We have come together to share, to put our resources together and observe this forthcoming election uh, under a network called Elections Observer Network, which uh, fortunately is being chaired by the Tijan Kaba Foundation. It's inclusive of everybody. We have the National Scouts Association, we had the Federation of Women Organizations, the Northern Women's Network, the Southern Province Women's Network, the Eastern Province, and that's a very beautiful organization because we believe that organization for women cuts across all tribes in their regions. And as long as they are able to come together, all tribes and all political parties together, we are getting closer to getting to national cohesion. And what we do in this fund, in this network, is to use the resources put together to observe the elections nationwide. We want to be able to observe all the elections in this country, not to criticize anybody, but to be able to get fair and credible assessment of what our elections are, mm -hmm. to tell our own story and let people know how elections are conducted in Sierra Leone, if it's acceptable, free, fair, and credible. Mm -hmm. and, and now, free um, during and post election always comes with some sensitive and tense sort of atmosphere, and uh, it's crucial for us currently. But you also don't come to help solve a problem if you do not identify the cause of the problem. With all the um, incidents of violence we keep having here and there, what have you attributed as the significant factors leading us to those situations in the country? Firstly, people have to understand election is not an event. It is a process. An election has what we call election cycle, like you rightly said. We have pre-election period, we have during election period, particularly the day when you go to vote, and then after election itself, how whether people are going to accept the, the results or how people are going to react following the election processes. Now, each of those cycles has its own consequences and it has its own character. Pre-election, we become particularly concerned about the campaign messages, the inclusiveness of people in their political party activities. Now, our concern at the current moment is, for example, 
trying to eliminate violence, trying to ensure that women, you've been given the legal rights, 30% to, to, to be nominated. We want to encourage political parties to nominate women so that they could also participate in our, in our exercise of dialogue across nations. We went to women groups, particularly at the border towns in Jendema and border towns in, in Gualamwea, to talk to women, to encourage them to participate in politics. We believe if everybody is given level playing field to participate in politics, it becomes all inclusive then will the idea of having national cohesion becomes easy for you us. You know, one of the recommendations you made, <coughs> excuse me, from the, the elections that you observed, I think it was a constituency mm -hmm. you three you, four, you had, you know, you, it was clear that voting, education and literacy is important. That was one of the reasons for, you know, void votes and the likes. And in terms of inclusivity, how does, you know, other election bodies are lacking in that area to teach the, the public on how to vote? Elections are, are citizens' participation in democratic processes. And for you to be able to understand how these citizens react to those processes, you should know how the citizens live. So for us in the foundation and everybody else in the, in the, in the, in the network, because we know we have local knowledge of the settings, will be able to determine, for example, what deters people from going to vote. What are people afraid of? What people deters people differs from location to location. We have uh, cultural settings, you have cultural societies, you have respect for elders, you have uh, distances from polling stations and so on. You need to have local knowledge to be able to encourage people and explain to people what elections are about. But you need to constantly, constantly keep talking to people, raising the awareness to people of the relevance of peaceful participation in political elections. Violence does not come, it's spontaneous, yes, but it takes continuous encouragement, continuous awareness raising to be able to encourage people to deter them from getting involved into violence. Mm. Uh, Peter, let's come back to you. Uh, part of the um, pillars that um, strengthen the uh, sustenance of peace uh, could be um, human rights, uh, access to justice, generally democracy and good governance. What's your fair assessment of these in Sierra Leone? from where we were in the 90s to where we currently are as a country? I think you rightly mentioned things such as the judiciary and so on. Um, they're all vital ingredients in, in democracy. Democracy is far more than just having elections every four years and people voting in a ballot box. A democracy needs all of its institutions working properly together in its respective roles. So that's as well as the government and the active opposition it is also the judiciary being free and fair and accessible for all people. A public service is serving the public. Um, the law and order being maintained by the police in a, in a democratic society. It is the police who have the main role in law and order. Um, the army has a role to play in, in defending its borders and so on. And then there's a role very much so for independent media like yourselves. Um, I mean, I, one of the things I, I do feel is, which is important, is that this whole question of having a non-violent election is far too important to be just left to the politicians. We, all, we are all stakeholders in what, how it affects the future of this country. And this will include the term that I'm still getting to grips to as an old man, but influencers. Everybody is now an influencer, I see. Um, <laughs> and they have a very important role to play. And amongst the influencers, um, I would also include my fellow chiefs. Um, I'm very proud to have been made a Paramount chief here. And the Paramount chiefs, as well as being just the custodians of the traditions and culture of the country, they have a responsibility, particularly at this time, to maintain a peaceful environment in which development can occur in their chiefdoms. So, and they also, from my point of view, are an integral part of Sierra Leone's democracy. Our democracy in this country 
is not, does not follow the Westminster recipe or the, or the Washington mm -hmm. recipe. We're creating Sierra Leone's mm -hmm. recipe, its own particular brand of democracy. And things such as the chieftaincy system have a very important part to play. When all those institutions are working together, then they can be also focused particularly on human rights. And when it comes to human rights, we then look to our NGOs. There are some very healthy NGOs in this country. Um, they are the ones who can help hold to account all the various institutions um, to ensure that our human rights are respected. Not least, as Ambassador Army has emphasized, the role of women in this country. Um, we, they still have much to, to catch up, although things such as the 50-50 group have done, made great strides. Um, I'm pleased to see that we now have lady paramount chiefs um, in the south. We don't have any lady paramount chiefs in the north yet. So there's, that's another further development we need to achieve. Um, but what we do need, every woman, every person, needs to be brought up in a society in which the, both their human rights are respected and their opportunities are there for all of them in a peaceful environment, no matter from where they come or from what political persuasion they are. Uh, with the, according to the TRC um, um, report, one of the things that led us to the war were um, some fractions of the public felt they were disenfranchised from getting their views heard. And now, fast forward to where we are, we live in a society where the plurality of opinions are now not just tailored through the traditional mainstream media, but they're also now frivolously shared on the social media which does not have professionals there to regulate and control what threatens national security or not. And that in itself has come back to create a problem for us in, in Sierra Leone. You make such a very important point there, and it's a point that particularly concerns me. It's a point that I've seen grow in recent times. Um, it's not unique, of course, to, to Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. and we've mm -hmm. seen all around the world um, what can happen with social media when it's uncorroborated, the information they put out. I mean, look what happened in the United States not so long ago. And all that was fueled by um, um, social media platforms. And, and it can be the same here. We've had examples of social media causing disruptions here just while I've been here, mm -hmm. for example, um, in, involving the, the Lebanese community. Um, and what happened in Lebanon with some Sierra Leoneans being killed there. Mm -hmm. So this is a very valid point you make, um, and, but it's particularly difficult to know how to um, control this. I mean, every country around the world is having problems controlling the, the social media. Uh, so we have to find ways. The best that I, advice I can offer is to try and instill in people a respect and a tolerance for other people's points of view. Yes, let them have their other points of view, but you don't then have to be sort of enemies and take <laughs> to the streets or, or advocate violent means to, to get their points across. You know, Ambassador, still on the role of the media, as Phoebe made mention, um, President, late President Kaba made a lot of emphasis and placed a lot of premium on the role of the media in all of this. How has the ATK fractured, you know, or come into play helping the media and through your simulcasts of peace talks and other messages? Uh, in letting people know about their responsibilities to state democracy, state peace, we always quote uh, Tijan Kaba. I remember immediately after the war ended, the week after that, when, he, when we, we, we attained peace, he says, if I remember rightly, he says, what has happened in the past what we saw, what has brought our country to the brink, it's, it's not the responsibility of any of you. And he was talking to a large number of people. It might not have been the responsibility of any of you. But from today hence, what happens to the democracy, peace and comfort of Sierra Leoneans, remains the responsibility of every single Sierra Leonean in this country. He meant, therefore, that everybody in your respective positions, 
Kumra Bai just mentioned that violence and elections and whatever it is, is too important to be left to politicians alone. Indeed, the peace of the country should not be left in the hands of anybody. It's in the hands of all of us. And this brings to mind the role of the media. We, we just had, Fibian says, uh, the social media. This social media, we do have experts in the media who are experts in social media control, bloggers, and so on. Those ones could be used positively to counter the negative ones. You could, it's much easier for you to defeat a system if you work from within than working from outside. I mean, those of you who are knowledgeable about, about uh, media are the people who I believe should take that responsibility and teach the rest of us and encourage the rest of us to use media appropriately. And to Jan Kaba, in dialogue across the nation, we use the media. We went to all radio stations, we went to TV stations, up the provinces. We believe and we are of the view that the easiest way to reach everybody in Sierra is through you people, everybody. People who do not read, listen to radio. Those who don't have radio, read newspapers. And those few who have the privilege and opportunity, watch TV. And if you listen to the arguments in the street, the premise they said is, I heard over radio yesterday, and they go along. Oh, I just saw it on television, and they continue. Oh, I've just read it here. So you people are vital elements in sustenance of peace and maintenance of national culture. Ambassador and Komrabai continue to stay with us. We'll come back to continue the conversation in a moment. We would quickly go on Facebook to read out some of the comments there and um, get the response of uh, Komrabai and Ambassador here before we um, wrap up this segment. Um, for the messages here, Kamala Charles is asking, what about when impartial institutions are biased and play the devil's advocate, being the nice guy game? The other message here says, Sierra Leone as a country is not dwelling well in the hands of politicians. As you know, Sierra Leone is one of the most peaceful countries in the world, but today most um, politicians are planning to change the peaceful atmosphere um, into unstable moments for us. And Ambassador, what role do you think you have to play with President Bio? President, former President Anes Baikoma and the judiciary in, or in any way to reinstall peace in the country. Um, okay, I don't know how I got myself in this internet wahala. Um, so like, could you please continue for a minute there? Uh, well, that's all for now. Let's just take um, Ambassador's response then. You can get yes. yourself together. Uh, one of the things we, we, we advise citizens to do and encourage citizens to participate in democratic processes is to vote. Voting is not just going on election day to cast your vote. Voting is to be able to listen to the messages these politicians are putting out. Voting is to be able to choose the, the individual who you believe and you are convinced is coming to contribute to the development of your locality, to the development of your region, to the development of your country. Choosing leaders should be, in our view, void of sentiments, mm -hmm. tribal affiliations, regional connections. Yes, maybe your schoolmates, because you would have known the individual over a period. But voting would be, you, you, you set yourself some criteria. If the individual meets that, then you should conveniently vote for him. By so doing, we are going to bring in people who we believe and trust will do the work for the country. You mentioned about uh, the current president and the former president. What Tijan Kaba Foundation and most other uh, NGOs have been doing is to engage in activities like this and to, to voice out mm. and to try to convey to political leadership in the country the essence and the relevance of peaceful coexistence. 
and maintenance of national cohesion. Another message here is saying respecting legacy is a great challenge for us in Sierra Leone. Um, I, I'm sure he's making you know, reference to respecting the legacy of former president, late president, uh, Amatijan Kaba. Legacy in this country, well, let's just go back to, to, to our National Museum, for example. It's very difficult for us to, we don't have a culture of falling back into things that were done well. We are happy at the foundation, for example, that there is an institution in Longe, I hope you've been there, run by, by Mr. Kel Fala for the for reparations okay, and yeah. so on why is is built a monument and a museum of peace mm -hmm. at longe which he believes will be able to be a constant reminder to all Sierra Leoneans never again to be involved in violence that could lead to mass destruction <coughs> in our country like i said in the absence of those all we could do is constant awareness raising in the country because um, people don't seem to look at legacies of good things that have passed. One would have thought we would buy now. You mentioned the village of uh, our very first prime minister in this country. I remember rightly we went on a state visit to China. And one of the items on our agenda was visit to the place of birth of Chairman Mao. And in the segment there was visit to the room he stayed, he lived in while he was a student. And yes, we did, indeed, we visited that place. And the whole delegation, including the president, went to see that. What that brings to mind, I think, teaches us that people from humble beginnings could contribute immensely to your country and I think one of the essences of legacies is to teach us humility how to live in society. Um, still on the aspect of peace, um, Komrabai, Alusain Kamara is asking that um, we ask you about your perception on the Yenga situation uh, which he terms a foreign invasion. And Joe B. Bangali Jr. Is, ask, is saying please ask Peter Penfold what he thinks about Sierra Leone police force for good at that time. Compared to the past 13 to 14 years, we need the Met Police to go back and work uh, with our police and teach them the morals and integrity. Um, well, I'm not going to say too much about the Yenga situation, but, um, except to say that obviously I think all of us want to see a peaceful negotiated solution to that problem. Um, but that's certainly not for me to, uh, to get involved one way or the other. That's for the respective governments to, to handle that. And I'm sure from what I've seen and heard and read, they are too keen also to solve that quite peacefully for the benefit of all. Um, but um, I just want to pick up the point about impartiality and, and biasness that was also asked. Um, I think it's, it, it, sometimes there's a very thin dividing line between impartiality and bias. Um, interestingly enough, you know, when I was High Commissioner, I was talking to Ambassador Duarte earlier, how many people <coughs> come up to me and talk very in praiseworthy terms about your president, High Commissioner. In other words, President Tijan mm -hmm. Kaba. Well, he was my president in that I was the High Commissioner. Um, but as I said at the time, the position that the international community took, and particularly the British government took, was that we were fighting for the restoration of the legitimate democratically elected government of this country. If it had been another president or another party, we would have maintained that same position. The personal relationship I had with President Cabo, of course, was to one side, and I enjoyed that very much. Um, so, so you can be impartial um, and not necessarily show sort of any, any bias towards that. Um, and that's what I think sometimes people have, have to learn here as well. And in your closing curtsies, uh, what would be your uh, probably message or word of caution to Sierra Leoneans as we head to election in June? Um, I, I think very much as I've said all along is that please let's not 
go back and undermine all the sacrifices that many, many people made in this country. Um, um, the um, fighting for the restoration of peace and the fighting for democracy. Um, as we have can see, it can be very easily done. Um, we mentioned earlier, for example, um, one of the moves being made at the moment to try and stop street demonstrations um, because they have the potential to turn violent. So, so all of us have a role to play in identifying where potentially things may become violent and try to ensure that that, that doesn't come about. Um, if we have non-violent elections, um, then we can only benefit all of us from, from what will flow from there. Um, and I very much hope that will be the case. Uh, and Ambassador, why is it important for our Sierra Leoneans to focus on building the peace as opposed to following our instincts and emotions and sp sp with violence? Elections, particularly these elections, the huge opportunity for all of us to determine our future. So it's, it's an opportunity for us to come together in peace, to choose people who will govern the country. It's an opportunity for us to participate in keeping this country in one piece by not fighting. You, you, you don't fight to go to get food when you are in the food line. You should go there joyfully. We are coming in happily and joyfully, freely and willingly to choose people who will believe will do the work for us. So let it be peaceful and let us respect each other in our participation. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for taking your time to talk to us this morning. Um, Kamwa Bai, that's a beautiful name. I, I hope you, you go along with it. Oh, very Did much you? so. No, <laughs> I, I, in fact, um, yeah, I think you're aware I do have a Sierra Leone passport. Oh, and on it. my passport, it is Kamwa Bai Peter Penfold. And it's always very amusing when I show that passport to the people at the airport in U UK, when they say, where's your visa for Sierra Leone? And I say, no, way it is. They say, but this is a different name. <laughs> and I point out... And that you know, name is a title. It's, 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 it's I, a I title. I, I point out. I said, no, this is a title. I say, it's like if I was in Britain, it would be Lord Peter Penfold. <laughs> and they immediately say, oh, I'm very sorry, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for taking your time to talk to us this morning. We'll go for a short break. We'll be right back. <laughs>